name is Mark Salamango. What an awesome day for Detroit, right? Oh, come on, right? It only goes downhill from here, trust me. Um, so think about it. I mean, we have TEDx Detroit here. We have entrepreneurs coming out of the woodwork right now. We have a 3-0 Lions team. I mean, come on, right? The, the Detroit Tigers are going to the playoffs, right? University of Michigan Wolverines are undefeated. Right, so, so we have a lot of really great things going on here. And, and I have to be honest, um, you know, I'm not a public speaker, and um, speaking in front of you is really kind of daunting. So, um, you know, I have friends out here, you know, former bosses, um, people that worked for me. Um, my pastor is even here. So uh, it's, it's, it's pretty cool, but it, it is scary. And so I was backstage thinking about um, being nervous, and it kind of hit me. I thought, well, this is really interesting, because if I come out here and I throw up, that video is going viral, baby, right? <laughs> if I come up here and after a while I pass out, <laughs> viral video, right? I mean, I could actually suck really bad, fall off the stage, and do any number of other things, and the video is going viral. So it's kind of a win-win, right? So, and, and I keep looking at it, you know what? At the end of the day, God and my mom are going to love me anyway, so it's all good. So, so I want to talk to you today about an opportunity an opportunity for Michigan, uh, an opportunity for Detroit, as well as the United States. So in talking about this opportunity, you may be able to tell um, I'm going to do things a little differently here. Um, and this is a big opportunity. It's a, it's a big vision. It's something that is very important to, to me and I think the community. And so instead of doing just a bunch of slides, I thought we would take the people that are going to help make this a reality and, and use them in the presentation. So. Um, what I'm talking about is this mega growth industry, this industry that is really big, and it's getting bigger and bigger, and it's in the industry of robotics. So in robotics, we have um, lots of different um, commercial robots coming out. We have lots of robots um, that, that you're seeing. They're, they're sweeping floors. They're um, cleaning pools. They're, they're even sensors are being found in phones now. You have uh, cameras and, and all kinds of accelerometers and things like that. But the problem is, we're not doing enough as a country. We're really behind. And so when you start looking at what other countries are doing, you see that Asia is actually spending five times more than we are in research and development of robotics. Um, Europe's spending over twice the amount that we are. Um, and, and last time I checked, we're the ones that, that do that kind of stuff. We're the ones that do the inventing. So um, we, we have this opportunity, and it's really, really important for us to, to kind of move forward on this. So what am I talking about when I talk about robotics? Well, it's, a, it's kind of a huge list, OK? The first thing is uh, we're talking about agriculture robots, OK? So robots that can um, plant crops, that can test the soil, um, that can treat soil, and that can also harvest crops. Now, I don't know if, if you all know this, but we're extremely good at harvesting um, grains and, and rices and things like that, nuts. Um, but we're not very good at doing things like fruits and vegetables. So that's an area that we, we want to really improve on. Um, along with that, we are, are looking at uh, vehicles, autonomous robotic vehicles that, that can drive themselves. We're talking cars now, right? So the goal is to have cars that can, can drive themselves, can take you everywhere, um, everywhere you want to go um, and, and be more efficient in doing so. So, um, of course, we can't leave, um, leave that, the whole robotics thing out without talking about military robots, because military robots are extremely important for us. So we're going to get our, our model here to disrobe a little bit. <laughs> you can see why I asked the fella to do it. Um, <laughs> viral video, right? So. Um, yeah, so what the goal is for, on the military side is we would like to put robots in harm's way and not our soldiers, right? And same kind of thing with um, kind of homeland defense and local law, law enforcement. We'd really like to, um, to start creating more innovative robots that can, can handle those things. Um, and, and finally, we're looking for medical and uh, service robots. 
Um, robots that, man, it would be awesome if I had a robot at my parents' house so that when dad needs to take a pill, the robot tells him or the robot can monitor him and make sure that you know, he hasn't fallen or, or something hasn't happened to him. So I'm just kind of touching on a, a smattering of different um, robots that are, are pretty critical for us. And there's a whole bunch of other ones. But you may ask, well, why should we be doing this in Michigan? Why should we be doing it in Detroit? And you're missing a fantastic moonwalk right now. <laughs> Give it up for Amy. So when we say why Michigan, well, it should be pretty obvious to most of us, but automotive research and development happens in Michigan, period. Almost every major automotive company on the planet has an R&D center in Michigan. That's a real amazing thing. Um, when you start looking at some of the, the other things that we have here, we have amazing universities, we have amazing medical facilities. Um, we have more employed engineers in Michigan than any other uh, state in the United States. Um, and and degree-wise, we're, we're third. We give more uh, engineering degrees than any, any other state. So we also have the US Army um, has their chief roboticist um, is, is located here. There's research and development going on in robotics um, locally, as well as um, a group called the Robotics uh, System um, Joint Project Office. Um, and so we have a lot of really good things. And what that really boils down to for Michigan is that um, we have a workforce that is really skilled. And when you take a look at the things that it requires to build a robot and the things that it takes to build a car, it's the same, same skill set. So what we're going to do is diversify, right? Take all the eggs out of the auto basket and, and put some into the robotics basket and give jobs to people that are graduating, right? Wouldn't that be a cool thing? OK. So, so some of the thrusts, and, and this is really this is the punchline here, right? This is what we're, we're here really to talk about is a project that we're starting called Robot Town. And Robot Town is a campus, call it a city. It's a big area where we want to do lots of robotic things. We want to um, coalesce kind of the, the robotics and, and universities and government and, um, and, and the commercial players to, together. We want to get them together collaborating so that we can be that innovation um, capital of the world again. So when we start talking about thrusts, what are we going to do in Robot Town? The first thing is testing. We don't have nearly enough testing done on robots right now. And uh, so one of the key things with this facility is we want to be able to drive these things around, these, these personal rapid transit little vehicles. We want to be able to drive them in an ur urban environment so we can make sure they're safe. We also want to make sure that they're reliable. We don't want, we don't want these things breaking down. Um, and, and, and from there, we'll do things like by integrating our, our culture with these things, we're going to figure out the best ways to interface with them. So all these things are really critical on the testing side. Once we go from testing, we have innovation, right? We're good at this in Michigan. Um, we're good at this in the United States. And, and the key is to, to create an environment where do-it-yourselfers and, and college students and, and elementary students and high school students can get together and they can, they can kind of take their ideas and actually build those things. But we're not going to stop there. We want to take those things that are, are, are being built and we want to help them productize them and commercialize them. And so, you know, Detroit's already got a plan. They got things moving. They got Tech Town helps you do that. We got Bizdom U. We got the Detroit Venture Partners. There's a strategy that's moving, and we want to embrace that strategy and leverage that strategy. So, uh, <laughs> I feel like there, there should be some music going on for that. <laughs> You're looking good. I like it. Um, so, education, obviously. You know, we want to take. Um, and build the bench for the future of our students, right? We want to get them, we don't want to wait till high school or, or college like uh, is, is happening right now. We want to start them off in elementary school and we want to get kids familiar with robots and, and what they can do and how to program them, how to build them. At least start to get familiar with them and then take them up through middle school and high school. And, um, and then after that, um, provide um, college uh, help for them as well as adult education. You know, there's a lot of people out of work right now. We can take some of those people and move them into this, this industry. And, and when we talk about jobs here, we're not talking about just the jobs for the facility. We're talking about bringing businesses. We want Robot Town to be the Silicon Valley catalyst for Michigan. Um, we also want to have tons of events. There are lots of competitions. In fact, there was one this last year called Magic. And um, I'm not even going to pretend to say the acronym for that one. But um, the University of Michigan won it. It was a global challenge. They held it in Australia. And the University of Michigan had a whole swarm of robots working in tandem or together. Um, I think there was like 18 or 20 of them working at the same time to, to solve problems and, and to complete tasks. And we should be really proud. A university in Michigan won a global robotics challenge. So that's really cool. Um, 
on top of that, um, FIRST Robotics is a huge competition. Um, and yeah, there's one person. Um, <laughs> and, and, and the great thing about FIRST is that Michigan does really well. We do a really great job at FIRST. She needs a hug. So in, in the, this last year, actually, in the top six, we're, we had three in the top six in the nation. So we have a lot of really great skills, uh, and, and we want to have these events, bring them to Robot Town. There's a whole list of other ones. So where are we right now? Well, Robot Town is a nonprofit company that we have started. Uh, we started a few months ago. Um, we have several partners, some great partners. General Motors is a great par partner. The U.S. Army is a great partner. We have Lego Education. We have Pratt & Miller. There's, there's several companies that are, are working with us on these things, but we really need your help. Um, this has got to be a grassroots thing that, that people in Michigan and Detroit really want. Um, we need um, tons of volunteers. We need some people to, to kind of manage the thrust areas. We need people to write proposals. We need people to kick people in the shins that aren't doing enough. Um, so. You look like a good person, and you, and pick a couple boys here. Um, um, so we really need your help. And to, to find out more about what we're doing, you could scan her shirt, or <laughs> you, can, you can come and check out our booth out in the, the music box room. Um, it, it's, I think it's really impressive what we have so far. There's some great technology in there to, to show off. You can also check us out at Facebook, uh, facebook.com forward slash robot, robot town, two Ts. Um, official, and then um, you can also look at our website, robottown.org. So those are some of the important things. Now, in recapping, we're behind. We, we just are. Um, Asia's ahead of us. Europe's ahead of us. Germany just had uh, vehicles running around their city autonomously. Um, on the policy side, Nevada, um, they, they have a law for autonomous vehicles and what you have to do to be a, a, an autonomous robotic vehicle driving around the street. So. We're the freaking Motor City. We should be the ones doing that. So, yeah. So, we need to kind of rise up. You know, jo join the Facebook page. Check out what we have going on. Um, there's lots of lots of opportunities. And if we turn turn around here, so this is where I prefer the gas gauge to be, and I prefer the little smiley thing. And but the thing is too that sometimes we think too small. You know, we get kind of in our, our follower mode. And, you know, I read a really great book by someone who could be in the room about dreaming in a disciplined way. And um, it's a fantastic read. And um, we need to start dreaming that way. We need to start dreaming bigger. You have this, um, the, the high-speed rail coming in, which I think is a good thing. But we also have a vehicle you'll see in our booth that is considered a personal rapid transit vehicle. It's a two-person vehicle, and there's new generations, and other groups are working on these things that require no infrastructure. And no one has this stuff, right? So we could, we could actually grab our iPad, iPhone, Android device and say, hey, I need a vehicle. And it'll say, OK, there will be one there in four minutes and 38 seconds. You see the countdown. The vehicle comes to you, takes you where you want to go. So there are, are iterations to make that thing happen. But that's what I'm talking about. Let's, let's start thinking bigger. And let's roll up our sleeves and make it happen. We're a great city with great people. Um, that are perfectly suited to this kind of thing. So I thank you very much for your time, and I appreciate you putting up with our models. I'd love you to give them a nice hand for... Thank you.